Please open your Bibles this morning to the book of 2 Peter. I'll be probably trying to uh, <clears throat> read a lot of scriptures to you this morning because what I'm talking about is so important. The, the reality of the fact that we will verbally make this statement and we will acknowledge it, but Christ has all authority and all power. Would you agree with that? All authority, all power. There's many, many scriptures throughout the New Testament. And when he rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples and he said, Behold, all power, all power, say all power, has been given to me in heaven and earth. Now, uh, that reality is wonderful and is true, but it really doesn't do us a lot of good unless we're operating in it. Matter of fact, in the book of Genesis, when God first created Adam and his wife, he said, I, I, he basically said, subdue and have dominion. And, and, and we don't know why, but for some reason, Adam, when the devil came and, and, and he was in his serpent, the snake, he did not take authority over the devil. Now, remember, Adam was not in a sinful situation. He was not in a sinful condition. He, he, he was walking with God every day. He fellowshiped with God. But for some reason, he did not take authority over, and, 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 and God gave him authority over all the animals. As a matter of fact, all the animals came before Adam, and the Bible says God stood there, and he watched Adam to see what he would call them. Now, that's one thing that's marvelous about God. You see, uh, some people would have you to believe that That's fine. She's working on music for tonight. But uh, some people would have you to believe that man is like a puppet on five strings. Uh-uh. God, God has given you the power to choose. And, and you, you chose to be here this morning. People chose not to be here this morning. You chose to believe that Jesus is the only way to the Father. The majority of the human race hasn't believed that. And God will stand by. You say, well, why, why does God allow it? No, really, God's given us the authority. God's given us the power. God's given us dominion. God's given us the choice. So when something happens in your life, if you have a revelation of the authority and the power of Christ, you won't be a victim. You'll rise up and be a victor. And, and a lot of bad things happen in life that's not God's will. A lot of bad things happen because we make the wrong choices or people around us make the wrong choices. And then we make the wrong choice in the response of how they choose to treat us or how they choose to operate. Now, the reason why God, God told David, because remember he told King Saul, he gave, and, and uh, Samuel gave some instructions to King, to King Saul, and Saul thought he knew better than God. How, how many of you have thought you knew better than God? Oh, I have. Now, I would never verbally say that, but by my conduct and my actions, I prove it. And, and that's why I wrote a book, I Need God Because I'm Stupid, because there's many times and I've made choices and decisions. And, and, but I always had enough of the truth of the word of God in my heart since I got born again in 1975 to know that anything negative that happens in my life is not God's will. See, I know what the perfect will of God. I believe with all my heart that all that God, God has available for us and all that God wants to do for us has been revealed to us in this book. I really, really, I, now I believe I can read books and I can listen to sermons and, uh, and, and, and I can have enlightenment and revelation and understanding from other people's uh, uh, divine revelations, but it's always in line with this book. Always, always. And, and so whatever you're reading, uh, whatever you're watching, whatever you're listening to, you, you got to make sure you're like the Bereans. They were more noble. They checked to make sure everything that Paul the, apostles, Paul the apostle said was true. So anytime you're hearing me preach or anybody preach, you, you, ought, you ought to be maybe taking notes and, or go back and watch the video and, and, and check everything out that I am saying or anybody is saying. Because, see, if you just swallow one little lie, it, it, it can have a negative effect on your life and keep you out of God's perfect will. For instance, I don't know if you know this, but the majority of those who call themselves Christians today in our modern society, most of them are not baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Most of them. You know why? Because they heard some preacher say that, oh, God doesn't do that anymore. And yet the Bible says this gift is unto you, to your children, to as many as the Lord our God shall call. And, and then you'll have preachers who'll tell you, well, it's not God's will to heal everybody today. But we see Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we see the book of Acts. You know, the book of Acts is the will of God for the church today. No ifs, ands, or buts. 
Yeah, but what if I prayed and they didn't get healed? It doesn't matter. It's still God's will to heal them. How many know that it's God's will that all men be saved? God wants all men to be saved, but they got to come to repentance. And the majority of them will not be saved. I, I'm not prophesying death over them. Jesus said that. He said, broad and wide is the way they lead to destruction. Many of the be which go where they're at. And straight and narrow is the way to life. And few there be which find it. So we talked about last Sunday how God is looking for people who are hungry for him. Now, we live in a world that it's easy to get full of everything but God. So easy. I think this is the, one of the most dangerous times the world has ever seen when it comes to our souls, the safety of our souls. So there's so many scriptures and so many promises, so many provisions. And I believe all that I need to become all that God created me to be is in this book. I believe it. I believe it. Now, I believe that God gives to us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to help us to mature and grow. But yet, in, uh, uh, on the other side, of the flip side of the coin, is that a lot of ministers can lead you astray. They can teach you wrong doctrine, wrong philosophy, wrong ideals. Like all those people who are not filled with the Holy Ghost and power because they've been taught that it's not for today. See, uh, and my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, the Bible says. And then he says, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I have rejected you. So God's given to us all scripture. Say all scripture. all scripture. It is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So as a baby Christian, I began to devour the word of God and I began to discover uh, uh, without anybody teaching me, this is before I ever heard of a, a lot of the, the, and there's good ministers out there that teach our authority and our power, but I didn't hear them, but I saw it in the Bible. I saw the authority, I saw the power that Jesus operated in. I saw the authority and I saw the power that the disciples operated in. And I don't know if you know this, this really, this whole struggle is, is, a, is a fight over authority and power. Even in the governments, in the home. It's all about authority. It's all about power. Uh, and and, and wh who you are going to surrender to, who are you, you are going to yield to, who are you going to listen to. So we're all, we're all submitting to somebody. You're yielding to somebody. It could be your flesh. Your flesh has got a voice. How many know your flesh has got a voice? And, and your, your flesh is always speaking. And are you going to surrender and submit to your flesh? Or are you going to surrender and submit to God? It, 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 uh, you're going to surrender and submit uh, to the voice of the world, uh, the voice of the devil, the flesh, money. Money has power. Money has a voice. Money will talk. But are you going to surrender and submit to the authority of money and power? Now, of course, all authority and power is in Jesus Christ. Now, we, 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 we go through life and we do a lot of dumb things. I, I'll just give you an example. An hour and a half Thursday night before I was supposed to preach, uh, I've been doing some work on the roof of my house. And I needed to take some two-by-fours up. I had cut myself four pieces of two-by-four, four feet long. And I had some black jack caulking on my hand. And I have a real flimsy aluminum ladder. Now, my boys, they've been working with me up there. And every time I see them start to climb that ladder, I tell them, don't climb it without somebody holding it because it'd begin to slide because it's up against the rain gutter. Well, Pastor Mike is standing down there. It took me three minutes to go in and get one of my boys, but... I heard the voice of my flesh. It must have been pride because pride goes before a fall and destruction before a haughty spirit. And uh, I, I knew in my heart I should get somebody to hold that ladder. Now, the dump thing is right next to my wood pile where I have some angle iron that I drove into the ground to hold my wood pile together. And so this ladder's right over three of my, these angle irons. So I thought, no, I don't need, I don't need uh, my boys. So I, I took the, now listen, because now God let me. See, I could have blamed it on the devil, and I'm sure he pushed the ladder when I was on it. I'm, I don't doubt it one bit. But I could have stopped, and I, I, I could have said in my heart, and I already knew better. How I many you know I preached on the wisdom of God Thursday night about Solomon? Now, that's the dumb thing. I preached I, all week long. I preached on that, decided to preach on the wisdom of God and how Solomon chose not to use the wisdom later in life. Now, 22 years ago, I fell from a ladder. My daughter told me I should secure. I laughed at her, mocked her, and I'm 20 feet up, and guess what that ladder did? It gave way, and I fell down on my back 20 feet, fractured my ribs, and just missed a grounding stake by about a foot. It would have gone right through my chest, but God had mercy on my stupid head. How many know that God has mercy on our stupidity? So I began to climb this ladder. I knew better. How many have done things that you knew better? 
You just do it anyways. So I'm up almost to the roof, and all of a sudden, that ladder began to go. And I'm thinking, oh, no, because it's falling towards, it's, it's falling towards, you know, the wood pile. And I'm thinking, oh, no. And I had my arms full of wood, and I had to caulk, so I couldn't. I, I, could, I should have just dropped it and grabbed the rain cutter. But in, but in slow motion, there I go. Listen, right down on top of the angle iron. I tell you, it was supernatural. Literally bent one of them in half. It's over there. Hit it in my back. Put a great big old gouge in my back. Ripped me open in the back. Hit my arm. Put a great big old bruise. Hit my leg. Put a big old knot on my leg. And down I come. My wife, my, my, my granddaughter, she was in the house with my wife. And, and, and little Serafina had to be the Spirit of God began to point in that direction. She likes to tell you where to go, you know. And she'll come and get, she likes to get everybody together in this sunroom for we can just sit there and watch her play. And, and, and you know, there, there's only three people who can push me around. That's my wife, my daughter, and my granddaughter. They tell me what to do a lot of times. And so little Serafina, she's telling my wife, go that way. And then she, so she takes her that way, and then she goes. She's here, she, she hears the clatter, and it wasn't Santa Claus on the roof, you know. <laughs> she hears this clatter. She runs out, and I'm laying there all banged up, tangled up in the aluminum ladder and, and, and hurting, man. I'm blood. My blood's running out my back, great big old gouge, you know. And so I'm laying there. I say, now I've got a choice. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? First of all, I repent. I said, I repent. I said, Lord, I'm sorry for being stupid. I heard your voice. I knew better. Now, in the natural, I'm saying in the natural, most people, most Christians even then, would have been calling the hospital doctors, get the ambulance here. My, my, hu my husband's laying on the ground all tangled up, but, but see, my family knows better because the first thing I began to do, guess what I did? I took authority over my body. I used the power that God gave me. I, I repented. I said, Lord, I repent. I said, now, bones, I command you to be healed. Internal organs be made whole. And I'm telling you now, I, I didn't feel like it. They helped me up, and I'm telling you, I'm walking as a crippled man. I'm telling you what, but it's a miracle I can even walk. I mean, that angle iron could have easily pierced my back and gone up into my, 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 my organs. And here I am. So I began to speak the word. The thought didn't even come into my head to let my sons or my daughter or my wife preach for me that night. So I, I did. I made it over here. It was all by faith, and Pastor Pete was the only one here besides my family, and I grabbed a hold of that pulpit, and I preached for about 45 minutes. Now, as I'm preaching, I'm telling you, the, the pain is hitting me so bad, I feel like I'm going to fall down. But instead of weeping and crying, the joy of the Lord hit me. I'm up here laughing. <laughs> Every time the pain hit my body, I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm telling you what, the joy of the Lord is your strength. See, that was faith. See, because faith will manifest righteousness, peace, and joy. And I'm, I'm, I've got joy. I've got joy, unspeakable joy in my heart. So I, I'm, I'm way, way better right now than I was on Thursday. I'm way, way better. But see, I understand something. I have authority. I have power. And, and how, how do you understand this, Pastor Mike? You, you know, I'm thinking about in the natural, in, in, in the book of Daniel, chapter, chapter 12, it says that in the last days... People will run everywhere in the last days. They will run. The implication is uh, the mode of transportation, something's going to happen at the last days, and the mode of transportation is going to radically change everything. And, you know, most people's transportation was walking everywhere they went. That's about how everybody got around. When I've been in the Philippines and in the back countries of other countries, that's still the number one mode. They're walking, okay? But something happened in the 1800s. All of a sudden, uh, all this technology says, and knowledge would increase. Knowledge would increase. And, and, and in the 1800s, from the beginning to the end of the 1800s, something began to happen. Now, a lot of this technology did not get implemented into the early 1900s. For instance, electricity. You know, we all enjoy electricity like it's always been around. Well, guess what? Lightning has always been around. Electricity has always been around. I mean, uh, uh, you know, millions and billions of volts that are, I don't know if you've ever seen a YouTube video uh, 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 up on the space station when they take, a, they, they take video of lightning storms on the earth. I mean, tremendous power. Lightning's always been around, but man never knew how to tap into it. 
Uh, I, I don't know if you understand about the uh, a steam power, steam ener- engines. It was created in, I think, 1830. Well, steam has always been around, boiling pans, you know, that there's tremendous power, in pa- but, no, but, but we never tapped into it. Um, when, when, it, when it comes to uh, ga- the use of gasoline or it comes to sonar or radar, which, of course, dolphins use it, whales use it, and bats use it, but we didn't begin to tap into it until really the beginning of the 1900s. Uh, what we call frequencies. How many enjoy listening to the radio? H- how many of you got a cell phone? That's magnetic frequencies. It's always been around. Did you know that every star, every planet, did you, not the planets, but the stars and the suns, they all produce magnetic frequencies. And literally now they can go in and every star has its own song. It has its own magnetic frequency. And radios are magnetic frequencies, walkie-talkies, CBs, this magnetic frequencies. We have 890 uh, millihertz on our radio station. That's a magnetic frequency. It's always been around, but we never tapped into it. Well, now we're in a time where we're tapping into all of this, this, this uh, uh, amazing uh, knowledge, but we never tapped into it. Well, if you look in the life of Jesus and you look in the book of Acts, the church learned how to tap in to God's authority and power. Authority and power. See, I took authority over my body and I used the power of the Holy Spirit to bring about healing. Now, the healing wasn't instantaneous. I love it when it's instantaneous. But see, the just shall live by faith and not by sight. See, it's by faith. It's by faith. It's, it's, uh, so, somebody said to me, said, pa- Pastor Mike, uh, uh, how are you doing? I said, I'm healed. I'm healed. Now, I'm not going to be healed. I am healed. Now, that's not a confession I make to people, but I speak to Mike Yeager. I am healed. Even though it was my stupidity. I mean, I've seen broken bones in my body healed instantly when I believed they were healed. Hernia that was bulging for three years. And finally I said in my heart, well, I'm going to use the authority and the power that God has given to me. See, God has given you authority and power, but you got to believe it. I said, you got to believe it. And how do, how do we, when Jesus said, all authority and power is given on me, go ye therefore into all the world. You have authority and power. He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Now, what's amazing in the old covenant, you'll find out many people who are operating in authority and power before they were even born again. I mean, they, they, see, we're born again. He, he's given us a new heart, hasn't he? I mean, you know, we were dead in our sins, but now we're alive. Well, those people had to wait until Christ came, died, and rose again. They were in the bosom of Abraham before they could be raised up. But, but yet they had authority and power in the old covenant even when they were still slaves to sin. See, God, see, if you read Hebrews 11, when we talk about the, uh, uh, hall, of, of, of the uh, hall of Faith, when it comes to uh, uh, Moses and Abraham and Isaac, and it comes to Joseph, and it comes to David and Samuel and the prophets, and how they overcame the enemy and how they defeated the enemy, they, they, they said, well, Pastor Mike, that was all by faith. Faith in what? God's authority and God's power. See, what we'll discover this morning, though, if you're going to exercise authority and power, the first place you got to do it is over yourself. You got to take authority, and that's why it says, "Above all, taking a shoot of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one." You have to take authority and power. I'll go back to the hernia. Uh, when we were putting up this building, we only had the crane for one day, didn't we, Howard? Donnie, they were here when we put it up. And so we had to manhandle those big girders and beams, steel beams. We're up there. It was a miracle none of us fell down to the concrete pad down here. I mean, we're up there and day after day putting it all together because this church, 95% of it was built by volunteers. And so we're up there, man. We're working. And if we would have slipped, I mean, we could have easily got hurt. It was only God's mercy and goodness. Uh, we didn't have no harnesses to tie off. We're just up there free walking. But I, in the midst of it, I tore my stomach lining and I got a hernia. And it began to bulge a little bit. Now, I, I, I passively, say passively, 
I wasn't aggressive. See, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. I have three books back there written about violent faith, a faith that will not take no for an answer, the violent take it by force, and treading upon snakes and scorpions. And so I, I, I didn't take violent faith for the first. My wife said it was two years. I thought it was three years. So it's getting worse and worse. And one morning I got up, and now that hernia is coming out so far to where they can get what they call strangulated. You know, you know they twist, and, and, and your, your, uh, your body, uh, your waist can't flow, and it can corrupt your whole body. And so I got up this morning. I thought, okay. I said, I have authority and power. I haven't taken the time to take my authority and power over this. How, how can I do it? See, that's why you say, okay, how can I express my faith? Because faith without works is dead. Is dead. So how can I? Okay, so when I, I got hurt laying on the, on the ground over there, uh, how can I express my faith in God? I know I'm going to get up. I'm going to make myself go preach. I don't care how I feel. I think out of all these years of preaching, I've been preaching really since 1975, only three times now when I got hit, yeah, we got hit with COVID, I stayed away for your sake because I didn't want the devil to tell people, well, see, Pastor Mike doesn't love us, he has COVID, and so he's over here preaching, even though I knew some of you did have COVID and you were over here and that was okay with me because <laughs> I'm not afraid of COVID, I'm not afraid of disease, I don't have a spirit of fear but a power, love, and a sound mind. See, that's exercising authority and power. See, it's not of the mind. It's, you got it in your heart. I'll show you how to do that this morning. But anyway, so, so uh, I said, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk this thing out. So I thought, okay, I've got this hernia. How am I going to show God that I mean business? I thought, I know what I have to do. I've got to shove it back up. And so I did. I took my hand, and I shoved it up into my cavity. I did. I shoved it up. I said, in Jesus. And when I did, I used my authority and power. I said, in the name of Jesus, and I shoved it up. And after, I don't know how long, 20, 30 minutes, it'd come back out, and I'd shove it up again. I did that all day long. I did that the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. For two weeks, I kept shoving it up. Well, why would you be so stupid, Pastor Mike? No, no, I'm operating in another realm. See, if it was flesh, nothing would have happened. But because I'm in the spirit, I'm not in the flesh. I'm operating in authority in Christ. I'm operating in authority. And if there is ever a day we need to use authority and power, it's right now. The enemy's coming. He's going to attack your mind, your emotions. He's going to use your flesh. He's a, now, I'm not talking about taking authority over people verbally. But in, in the spirit, you can. You get alone in your prayer closet and you say, that demonic power that is driving that person, I take authority over it. I, I, I'll tell you another story and I'll come back to this. Michael, when he was real young, it was back in 1985. Uh, 86, he began to really get out of hand. Now, listen, I believe in corporate punishment, so I would spank him. I would spank him. But you know what? It's not doing any good. And I said, Lord, what is going on here? It doesn't matter how much I spank, Michael. It's not doing any good. He said, in this situation, you got to take authority. It's a demonic power that is inciting him. He didn't have devils, but it was the demonic power behind it. How, how many know behind all sin is demonic powers? It's not that they are demon-possessed. They can be oppressed, obsessed, uh, depressed. I have a book back there called The Expert's Handbook of e Exorcism. And, 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 but, but, but people yield themselves. See, who you yield yourself to obey, his servant you are to obey. So guess what? If you yield yourself to your flesh, guess what? You become its slave. You become a slave of your flesh. Your flesh don't want to pray. Your flesh don't want to go to church. Your flesh doesn't want to do what's right. You take authority over your flesh, just like you would a little child. Now, today, a lot of parents just let their children do whatever they want, and that's the worst thing you could ever do. you got to raise that child with the understanding of authority and power. And all authority come, and, and, and they need to understand, mom and dad, they're not your friends. They're, they're an authority. Are you hearing anything this morning? So I, I got alone, and I began to say, devil, in the name of Jesus, and I didn't lay my hands on him and pray over him and say, come out of him, devil. You'll just make him a mess. 
You get them thinking they got devils in them. No, I got alone. And I said, you lying devil who's tormenting my son, Michael, who's, taking, who, who's trying to make him disobedient, rebellious. I take authority over you. And I, I, in Jesus' name, I thank you. that you. I, I thank God you got to go right now. I said, right now. I said, right now. So from that moment forward, I began to thank God. It's done. I thank you. And instantly, Michael's whole countenance changed. We had another little girl. Her name was Sarah. She came down from Carlisle. Uh, they, they, she was going to a, a, a school in Carlisle and she was so she, she had the tick syndrome so bad her head was just like this precious little 12 year old girl uh, she went into the uh, principal's office trashed the office out she'd go out into the parking lot and hide under the cars when they went to get her and the parents called me up and watched me on TV in those days and said Pastor Mike we're hoping that you can help us with our little girl Sarah she's uncontrollable they want to put her into uh, Hershey Medical Center in the psych ward and I said to her by the spirit of God I said there's three months left to our school year bring her here and we'll take care of it and, and she said, really? I said, yeah. So she'd bring her down. And when she first came in, little Sarah's head was going like that. And she was just completely uncontrollable. And we, but we never yelled at her. We never screamed at her. I'd get her alone with another teacher, a female teacher. And I would pray over her very gently. I would just speak life over her, life over her. And, and, and all of a sudden, uh, the, the, they, and they had her on all kinds of drugs. And I said, that's another thing. If you're bringing her, you got to get her off all the drugs. Whenever I had kids come in that had uh, that, that had hyper uh, activities that had whatever it's called, I'd always I would never allow children to come here that were on any kind of psychedelic any kind of drugs that affect the brain. I'm talking about medicine that affects the brain, and every one of those children were straightened up, every single one of them. So we began to pray over Sarah. I'm telling you what, before she left our school in three months, the tick syndrome was gone. She was an A student, and she was a perfect, beautiful little child. The next school year, the parents made the choice to put that child back in the public school. And the, the, I got a phone call one day from the principal of that public school. And they said to me, what did you do to Sarah? I mean, they were amazed. She was a completely different little girl because not, nothing they could do, the world could do, could help her. And, and I said, I do something you can't do. She said, what is it? I said, I prayed in the name of Jesus over her every single day. And, 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 and I I didn't, wasn't, you devil come out of her? No, no. I just speaking life, speaking healing, uh, speaking the truth over her. And she, and, and, and it got real quiet over the phone and she hung up on me. <laughs> See, because it's a spiritual battle we're involved in people. You need to understand, we don't wrestle flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And I've seen that uh, for my whole Christian walk, basically. And so I'm shoving that hernia up for two weeks. And one night I went to bed and I got up the next morning and the hernia was completely gone. I did that with my busted kneecap when I had a terrible uh, uh, snowmobile accident. Slammed my knee doing 45 miles an hour going down on black ice working for the township in a snowstorm. And I slammed my kneecap. And you could take my kneecap and you could move it around. And I took authority over it, and it took two weeks, but bless God, my knee got completely healed. Did it with a broken foot. The fifth time I slammed it down, it was completely healed. Story after story after story. You know why? Because I have authority and I have power. He said, well, Pastor Mike, don't we have authority and power? Yeah, you just don't use it. You see, uh, all of these things, these, this technology, sonar, radar, uh, electricity, steam power, it was all available from the beginning, but people never used it. The early church moved in the authority and power that God had given to them, but somehow the devil came along and robbed it from us. Hello? I said, the devil, and the devil is having a heyday in our marriages and our children and our families and our lives and our finances and our bodies because we're not operating in the authority and the power that God gave us. Y'all hearing me this morning? Sure, it's quiet in this Baptist church. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Look at here in 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, notice in verse 2. Now, I'm going to show you how authority and power comes in. We're just going to give you some scriptures about what Christ has accomplished. How, how many believe the book? Let's believe the book. See, the Bible says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So, for in other words, you can acknowledge the book in your head. 
You acknowledge it in your head. But the reality of it is not in your heart. You got to get it in your heart. How do you get it in your heart? I, I, I got a book back there called The Expert's Handbook of Meditation. The other day, somebody who had been reading my stories for years, they came back and they said, oh, Pastor Mike, I, I never really understood how important it is for the meditation of the word. And I finally understand that's why you can do what you can do because you meditate upon the word of God night and day. You meditate upon the truth. You hide the word in your heart. You eat it, you drink it. Tonight, I'm going to take a, a real deep dive into the Gospel of John. You're talking about a, a, an amazing book. I know most people, when they get saved, they're told, the first thing you should read is the book of John. No, 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 no. That's not the first book. You start with Matthew. I believe that God has put together the Bible in, a, in the order it should be read. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then you get to John, and you begin to take such a deep dive into the realm of the Spirit where all things become possible. He says, eat my flesh and drink my blood or you have no zoe in you <laughs> but if you eat my flesh and drink my blood you can have zoe how many want zoe jesus said i'm come that you might have zoe and have it more abundantly what's zoe life as god has it you can have life as god has it i'm not proud of mike yeager my confidence my faith my trust is in jesus christ and all things are possible to those who believe and believing is when you know that 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 you know. And it's a never-ending knowing that you know that you know that you know God's word is true. And every human being can walk in that reality, but people choose where they want to live. And you can live in the darkness or you can live in the light. Now, if you're in the darkness, you can come out of the darkness into the light. And the darkness we're talking about is not just sin, it's ignorance. It's unbelief, it's doubt. Come out of the darkness of unbelief. I'm telling you, there is a place in the Holy Ghost where you do not need the world for anything. You don't need anything from the world. You get everything you need right from God. <laughs> Joy just hit me. Amen. And as I'm standing up here, I'm, uh, if you say, Pastor Mike, how do you feel? I'm beginning to feel better and better right now. <laughs> Many times as I was standing up here sick or had major issues in my body, God healed me as I was preaching the word. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace, that means God's divine ability and his peace that passes all understanding through the knowledge of God in his word right here. Right here, it's right here. You, you don't have to go seeking for it high or low. You don't have to go to some kind of distant country and go and, and, and try to find it in the, in the cave deep within, within the recesses of the earth. It's right here. Hold up your Bible. It's right here. It's right here. Your victory, your success, your prosperity, your authority, your power is right here. Just get it in your heart. Woo! <laughs> According as his divine power hath given unto us, wow, all things that pertain unto life and godliness, life in this world now and of that which is to come, all things. He has given us all things. Say all things. Man, we ought to be shouting and running right now. All things. He says all things are yours. It's right here. All things that pertain to life and godliness. How? How, Pastor Mike? Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of Jesus. Huh? Who has called us to glory and virtue. You know, the word glory means God's manifested presence. I mean, it will come. God's glory and virtue shows up when you meditate and hide the word of God in your heart, and you begin to discover you have authority, you have power, you have dominion. And it begins in you. Take authority over your thought life, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Take authority over that telephone of yours. Take authority over the desire of wanting to watch vain amusements. Take authority over whatever the devil is throwing at you because if you don't take authority, he will do it. I remember years ago, I had some people rising up in the church and all they wanted was authority and power. They were looking to control and the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, he said, uh, he said if you don't do something in the spirit, they're going to take it over in the flesh. 
said, you take authority, not, not arrogance, but God put me in authority here. He said, if you don't rise up and take authority, somebody will do it in the flesh. It's like your children. When I say take authority, I don't mean barking and yelling and screaming at them, but you train them to understand. See, I was raised in a military home, so maybe I have a little bit of benefit because I do not remember one time, I'm talking about even when I was a sinner, that I ever argued with my dad or disagreed with him, not once. Not once. I'd always say, yes, sir. We don't have that no more. Kids don't say, yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. How many of you were raised in a home that said, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am? But many of the children today, they're not raised with that. And so people think it's no big deal. Now, you got to begin when they're little. You can't train them when they're teenagers. You waited too long. you got to train them when they're little to say, yes, sir, no, sir. And, and so you get this attitude when it comes to God. Yes, God. Yes, sir. You know, go to church. Yes, sir. Uh, give financially. Yes, sir. Forgive. Yes, sir. Pray. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, share the gospel. Yes, sir. Uh, go to that communist nation where they're going to try to kill you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Put up a building that sits 800 people uh, uh, with no money. Yes, sir. Put up a satellite system that costs $250,000 with no money and don't raise the money. Yes, sir. Go on TV and preach back in 1983. Go on TV and preach uh, the gospel. And, and, but, Lord, the church doesn't have the money. No, no, they're not going to provide the money. You believe me. And, yes, sir, and went on TV and ended up on seven TV stations, including satellite five days a week with no money. <laughs> now, I didn't begin there. I had to start somewhere. So I started in the basics. Lift your hands. He says, lift your hands. Yes, sir. He said, shout. Yes, sir. Dance. Yes, sir. You know, pray. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, don't put nothing wicked before your eyes. Yes, sir. <laughs> Seek my face. Yes, sir. Can you all shout yes, sir? Yes, sir. Listen, he, he says, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us, given, they have been given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Why? That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we know what we're fighting against. Lust. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. The lust of, of the pride of life. The love of money. Lust. Lust, it's in all of us. Don't believe anybody who said, when I got born again, the old man died. Oh, no, no, you got to die daily. You got to crucify that old stinker. We've been contaminated. We've been corrupted. And the Bible says this corruption will put on incorruption, and, and this mortality will put on immortality. I got to crucify. I got to mortify. And I'm not called to crucify your flesh. I'm not called to mortify your flesh. That, that, that would be usurping authority. You know what the devil did and the demons did? How many know what usurping authority is? Usurping authority is when you take authority that doesn't belong to you. I have no authority over your flesh. You have authority over your flesh. You've got to take authority. I had someone contact me this week, and they, their aunt is dying from some kind of disease. And unless the Spirit of God moves upon me, I said to this person, I said, do they want to live? What? I said, do they want to live? Oh, I, I don't know. I said, well, you can't exercise authority over them unless they want to live. Now, if someone's dead and the Spirit of God moves on you to raise them up, you can. But people have got to want to live. I, I, Brother Hagen told a story years ago. He, he, his wife, his mother was just hanging on, hanging on. And one day, and I'm not saying you can't exercise any authority, but it's authority you shouldn't be using. And one day, he, he, the Lord spoke to me and said, what are you doing to your mother? He, he said, what? said, she wants to come home. What? Let her come home. So he, he said he repented. Say repented. Because he was usurping authority. He went to his mother and whispered to his ear. Said, Mom, you want to go home to be with Jesus? Go ahead. And that night, away she went. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, my kids, they've been telling me, you're going to live to 120. I said, I don't want to live to 120. I said, I want to go home when I know in my heart, and, and they've been disagreeing with me. Finally, my daughter the other day said, and one of my sons said, if dad wants to go home early, he, he, it, not early, but if he wants to go home before he's 120, he has a right to. I said, thank you. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to be out of here when my job is done. When the Lord says to me, your job is done. I know Brother, brother uh, Charles Caps. Uh, I know uh, his daughter was preaching for us. And I said, your daddy, he just went home to be with the Lord not too many months ago. Tell me about that. Well, he, he came to us, and it was a Friday. And he said, in three days, he said, I'm going home to be with the Lord. There was nothing wrong with him physically. He said, I'm going home to be with the Lord at 9 o'clock Sunday morning. And so they all said his goodbye. He was perfectly healthy. He sat back in his easy chair, and at 9 o'clock, away he went. Hallelujah. That's the way to leave this earth. He said, oh, you're goofy. You're off the wall. No, it's authority and it's power in Jesus' name. Do we believe the book or don't we? We have authority and power. Now, now when you, when you, and there's times when the enemy attacks my body, and, and I'll speak to the sickness or the disease or the affliction. I'll say, go in Jesus' name. And then there's sometimes I just got to hang on, and, and, and the only thing, I, I'm praising God, and I'm saying, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. How many know it's not unbelief to speak the name of Jesus as many times as you want? Back, what, about two months ago, I had kidney stones again, and my, my kidney got infected, and then my uh, left ankle tried to go out, my right knee went out, and my mouth got so infected I couldn't eat anything, and all I could do was say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, for about a whole week. And you know what? I, I don't care what people call it. In a week, I was completely cleared up in all of those afflictions. Now, see, I'm not moved. Well, you didn't get healed the first day. You didn't get healed the third day. You didn't get healed the seventh day. So what? I'm healed. See, I'm healed. God, say, I'm healed. God, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken? Shall he not make it good? Whoo, ain't that good stuff, man. See, the world don't have this kind of authority. The world don't have this kind of power. Nobody has this but those who believe in Christ. You have authority. You know, we got it in our heads. We're victims. You're not a victim unless you allow yourself to be a victim. Well, why did the devil, why did God allow this? Why'd you allow it? Take authority over it. Tell it to go. Tell it to shut up. Tell it to leave you alone. And tell it, I mean business. I remember Smith Wigglesworth telling the story. He said there was this woman who had a, a cute little dog that she loved this little dog. And, and this dog would follow wherever she went. But she had to go away one day. And the dog knew where his house was. And it, it's, she's going to the bus depot. And she's getting close to the bus. She says to the little doggy, go home, little doggy. Go home, go home. I, I'll see you when I get home. Little dog. Finally, she just stamped her foot down and yelled and said, get out of here. And away the little doggy went. You got to do that sometimes. Get out of here. Go. Your torment, your depression, your fear, your anxiety. The church should have rose up when that epidemic came and taken authority over it. Said in the name of Jesus. You get out of here. You shut your mouth. Well, what if it does attack you and it didn't listen to you? So what? I just keep on using authority. The trying, of, you know, that's where a lot of people mess up when they go to cast out devils. They think they got to keep screaming and screaming at the demon to come out of the person. I learned as a baby Christian how to cast devils out. Because when I'm moving, and I know when I'm in authority and power, I speak to the devil in that person, and, and sometimes I just whisper. And I'll say, I'll get to their ear for nobody will hear. I say, you want clean spirit? Every spirit is an unclean spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You spirit, I don't need to give up all these goofy reaching names. I don't care what you've been taught. I don't have to speak to a Jezebel, Je Je Jezebel spirit or, or a Kayana spirit or a, a serpentine spirit. That's all, that's all the devil just exalting himself. I say to that unclean spirit, you foul unclean spirit, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. And I can throw the blood in there, that's fine. In the name and by the blood of the authority, come out. And then I back up. I back up and I just stand there and I wait. And every time I've ever done that, I watch that demonic power to come out. Just come out, boom. Now, I, I knew this before I ever met Lester Summerall, which I got ordained through Lester. But if you go online and you can find good sermons from Lester Summerall about how to cast devils out. And people complicate it because the devil loves to be exalted. The devil loves to be magnified. He loves it when you go on and on and on. No, shut up and come out. If you know your authority, you know your power. <laughs> he said, Pastor Mike, you're crazy. Oh, uh, 
A lot of people think that. Look what it says here. And, and this is a part of authority, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I sure want to give you some more scriptures. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your what? Faith, your virtue. Now listen, if you're going to operate in authority and power, you, you better begin to add these things to your life. Virtue, and I can't get into their meanings, to virtue, knowledge, and the knowledge, temperance, and the temperance, uh, patience, and patience, godliness, and the godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in other words, if you're not, if you're not letting these things manifest in your life, you'll be unfruitful in the knowledge of Christ. I mean, you'll have it all here, but if you will add these things into your life, if, if you will seek first the kingdom and say, man, I need these things. I, I need the virtue. I need the knowledge. I, I need the kindness. I need the patience. I need the self-control. I need the godliness. I, I, I need the charity in my life because faith without uh, faith worketh by love. I need these. If you're going to use uh, if you're going to exercise authority. You know, I'm telling you what, or otherwise you're not going to exercise authority. And it says, but he that lacketh these things is blind. He's what? He's blind. He cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So in the book of Hebrews, there's many, many scriptures that we could look at. Uh, Hebrews, take a look in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7, please. Hebrews chapter, y'all want any more? Okay. And that was just the appetizer, but we won't hold you all day, I promise. Unless the Lord tells me to. Look what it says here in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7. And this is talking about Jesus Christ. So you've got to have a revelation of Jesus. It talks about the authority of Christ in Philippians. He's given them a name above every name that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. He's given them a name in, 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 in uh, Ephesians chapter 1. It, it says that, uh, that, that, that all power and authority has been given, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all authority and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and given him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and all. It's under your feet. I said it, but go ahead, stomp on the devil. It's under your feet because we believe all sickness and disease. Now, now I'm just going to tell you where I live. This is where I've lived for the last 47 years. I don't need the doctor's diagnosis. I never go to get a doctor's diagnosis. Because I already got God's opinion. And so whatever is afflicting my body, I just rise up in authority and power. Will you get yourself killed living that way? Well, I'm still alive. I'm still kicking. I'm evidence it works. But see, I, I, I know my authority and power in Christ. I said I know my authority and power in Christ. See, I tell you what, people, they just need to, they, they just need to stop playing footsies with the devil. Just stop playing, just stop being like I was with that hernia for the first two, year, two years. Just get mean business with God. I mean, just mean business with God. Just begin to say, in the name of Jesus. Just begin to say, in the name of Jesus. Just begin to say, in the name of Jesus. They said, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yeah, but I did submit myself to God. I did resist the devil. He did flee from me. For, well, wait, well, how long do you submit to God? From that moment forward, you submit to him. Yeah, but my flesh, well, I know what your flesh does. I got flesh. I got a mind. I got emotions. I got feelings. And when I don't take authority over it, I get in trouble. You take authority over it. You take authority. I remember, because before I got saved, I was manic depressant. I mean, I tried to commit suicide numerous times before I got saved. Driving my car as a 16-year-old on the other side of the road, headed for a car, and I would not move. And I knew we were going to head on if that car would not, 17 years old, if that car would not have gone off the road into the swamp. I mean, I was going to kill myself. I was driven by devils. 
taking that knife, going to cut my wrist when the fear of God fell on me. But after I was saved for a couple of years, one time I was living in the old chicken house up in Belleville, Pennsylvania, working for a feed and grain mill. Now, this old chicken house had been converted into a regular house, plywood floor, had to duck your head, and the, the man and woman I was staying with, the evangelists, they were newlyweds on the other side of the house, and, and they, were, they, they, you know, they were still fresh in their marriage, and so uh, they liked to fool around at night, and I didn't want to uh, stay up front and hear them. So I took the room the farthest away from their room, and it was not heated. My bed was made of two-by-fours and plywood. And I still had my sleeping bag that I, I was using up in Alaska when I was living on the mud flats and reaching out to the Yupik Indians. And so that's what my bed was. I'd crawl into that, uh, that, that, that uh, uh, sleeping bag. It was a bad winter back in 1977, 78. And I'd climb into that sleeping bag at night. And it's, it's like probably it could have been 20, uh, it could have been 20 degrees back there if not colder. And I'm back there and, 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 and they're taking all my money and they're basically living off of my money to a great extent. I wasn't bitter at them and, and I'm back there and, and they, they weren't concerned about my, 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 my condition. Matter of fact, I'd get so hungry one time I came home and they weren't cooking and I'm not picking on them and in there was an old uh, meal of, of, of uh, tuna, tuna casserole and it had mold growing on it. But I was so hungry and it was foolishness. I took authority. I said, I'll not get sick but I got as sick as a dog. <laughs> Ate that old tuna casserole and, and, and I, I'm a 21-year-old kid, you know, and, and, but depression hit me. I mean, depression hit me again, not suicidal depression, but extreme depression hit me. And I got up one morning, and it's going on for day after day, and finally I said, I've had enough. See, I had to take authority. I took my Bible and laid it down on the floor of that, uh, that, that plywood floor, and I stood on top of my Bible, and I said, no more, devil. I said, I'll not be controlled by depression. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over you. You'll not drive me in, into, uh, in, into depression. And a lot of people do a lot of stupid stuff because of depression in the house of God. I said, I take a, and I took authority over you. And then I just began to act like everything was hunk door, Everything was all right. And that depression left me. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. I'm telling you, there's scripture after scripture after scripture that tells us that we have authority in verse 7. Take a look there. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things. Woo! Glory! <laughs> wow! That covers everything from A to Z. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing. Come on, come on. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. For it was everything is under his feet. Say everything. 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 I don't care what name it is. I don't care what circumstance it is in your life that is personally attacking you. You have authority over it. He says, we may not yet see all things, but everything is under his feet. Everything is under his feet. Everything is under his feet. And the first thing you got to do is you got to bring yourself under the subjection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Who's, who's my brother, sister, and mother, but they that do the will of my Father in heaven? And then he says this, but we see who? We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for our suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Well, we're going to close here in a moment, but what do you mean through sufferings? Listen, he sweat it was as great drops of blood. Your suffering does not mean you're out of the will of God. Every time I exercise authority and power against the works of the devil, most times I was in the midst of suffering. There was still pain in my body. There were still problems everywhere I looked. It still looked like this church for been, going on 40 years we've been here, and there's many times when it didn't look like we had enough money to keep that keep going even for another week. But I would just say, Lord, I thank you that you put me here. 
You're going to keep me here. I'm going to trust you. I'm not shutting the doors. I'm not closing down. I, I don't care how it looks. There's been times we've been, uh, uh, I mean, uh, twenty, thirty thousand dollars behind on bills, and I didn't lie and manipulate. I didn't, I didn't during those times. I, I didn't come up here and cry and say, if we don't pay our bills, we're gone. No, I just said, Lord, you put me here, and you're able to keep me. Praise the Lord. And God's kept us afloat all these years. Praise the Lord. Where every bill is caught up to current, and basically the church is out of debt except for the parsonage. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm breaking the body. But we see Jesus. Say, I see Jesus. Look there in verse 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all one, but which cause he is not ashamed, calling them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. Will I sing praises unto thee? And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I am the children which God hath given me. The evidence of the reality of the fact I'm a son of God, I'm a child of God, I'm one of his people, is the fact that I walk in his authority and power. I walk in his authority and power. Well, why don't you just go raise everybody from the dead that, or, or get them up out of the hospital then when, 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 when they're sick because I don't have that authority and power. Did you ever study, did you ever notice 99% of the people that were healed in the ministry of Jesus is because they came to him? Did you ever notice that? 99% of the people and there's times when the father told him, like the widow lady that had the son, who, and, and it was her only son, and, and the, spirit of, the father spoke to Jesus and said, raise him up. And, 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 and that's how we operate. You, I don't go out here and lay hands on every per, sick person I see. I, I wait for the father. Now, I've, done, I've, I've seen some amazing things. My wife and I, back some years ago in Cracker Barrel, and eating breakfast, and the waitresses began to run through the restaurant and say, is there a doctor, is there a doctor in the house? And I, I would get up a lot of times and go see if I can help, but in that situation, I felt in my heart, no, just stay here. And so we got done eating, we come around the corner, and right there in Chambersburg, as you, as you come into the restaurant area, they got a little desk set up, and, and, and that's where you sign in, and they set you down, and there was a, a good crowd there, maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 people, and I looked through there, and I saw a woman leaning over another lady who was probably in her late 60s, and she's laid there on the floor, and I knew in my heart right away she was dead. I knew she was dead. But at that moment, the love of God hit me for that woman on the floor. I'm, I'm not even thinking. It's like my mom, now my mom died in 2000, but this is like my mom on the floor. The, the faith that worketh by love. I mean, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a sympathy. It was the love of God that hit me. And it's like, that's my mom. That's my mom on the floor. She needs me. That's my mom on the floor. I mean, it overwhelmed me. Tears began to roll down my cheek. That's my mom on the floor. And without thinking, I said, excuse me, excuse me. And I come through there and I get down on my knees and this woman's got that, that woman's hand her, her hand is up she's laying on her left side so the right hand she's got her hand up there and she's got a her thumb on her her blood vessel her artery right here and I put my hand her face was cold she had probably been dead for maybe 15 minutes or waiting for the ambulance to come and take her body and I just prayed to so I said in the name of Jesus I don't remember exactly what I prayed I didn't pray a long prayer I commanded her to come back into her body I'm telling you, that no sooner left my mouth than that nurse got excited. She said, she's got a pulse, she's got a pulse, she's got a pulse. Well, that lady on the floor, she reaches up her hand and squeezes my hand to let me know everything's okay. My job is done. I just simply got up, walked back through the crowd, took my wife by the hand, rejoicing in what God had just done, and walked outside, and here comes the ambulance. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Why doesn't that happen all the pastor time, Pastor Mike? Well, I don't see people die in front of me all the time either. But I'm led by the Holy Ghost. When you're, you cannot be led by the Holy Ghost unless you're submitted to God. Well, how do I submit to God? First thing you do, pick up your book. Right there it is. Submit to this. Right here. I, I'm, I'm just telling you love. No, no condemnation. The devil's having a heyday because people... We say we love God, we say we know God, but we won't just simply do what the Bible says. Right. We just won't do what the Bible says. Right. And then all of a sudden, thank God he has mercy on us. All of a sudden, we get into a mess. God, oh God, help, oh God, help. 
And God does a lot of times in spite of it, and then we got out of that mess, and we do it again, and we do it again, and we do it again, and we do it again. When, when really, we got to break this pattern of rebellion. You know, people are looking, for, listen, I, I'm not into this. Pastor Mike, what if there's, we, uh, we just lost a family because the wife came here, and she saw things she ain't used to, and she told her husband, she says, there's witchcraft in that church. No, this, this, listen, people think you go back into the dark ages where people were superstitious, superstitious. They are today. People are extremely superstitious in the church today. And they're pushing superstition as if it's truth. It's not truth. It's superstition. All kinds of devils and demons and naming this and naming that and and, and they just, and it's not even in the Bible. But see, they think they have a deeper revelation in the Bible. I'll tell you what, you stay with your deep revelation. I'm sticking with my Bible because I found out it works for me. Now, I'm on a crusade against these people. My heart bleeds for them. I just ain't got time for none of that foolishness. So somebody says to me, Pastor Mike, what if you got witches in your church? I said, one or two things will happen. Either they're going to repent or they're going to leave. That's it. What if you got people demon possessed? I tell you what's going to happen. They're either going to, they're, 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 they're either going to, you know, demon possessed. Either the devil's going to manifest and I'll cast it out when it manifests, or they're going to run for the door. Listen, through the years, I've had people come here and I knew they were involved in same, same sex relationships. I'm preaching the word. And either they repented or they ran out the door without me attacking them. Why? Because darkness can't stand the light. You preach the truth, and people who love the truth will come. But those who don't love the truth, they'll leave. Now, that doesn't mean they can't ever see the light. Look at Saul of Tarsus. He would not accept that Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord, the one promised, but the day came when he turned around. We don't ever know when somebody's going to turn around. That's not our business. My business is to preach and teach and declare the truth. Praise the Lord. Woo! Glory! <laughs> hey, listen, man, I can even dance. You can't believe how much pain I had before I came up here this morning. <laughs> Woo! My wife's been having to help me get in and get out of bed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know why? Because we have authority. We close our eyes. Please, just for a moment. Just ask the Lord. Father, where am I not submitting to you? Where am I not submitting to you? Lord, and repent. I repent for not submitting, God. See, you say, it ain't that important. Oh, yeah, it is when the devil comes knocking on your life and your loved ones. Man, you're not submitted to God. You're in trouble. You got to submit to God. Father, I pray right now that in the name of Jesus that the Spirit of the Lord would come upon us. And, Lord, I repent for areas of my life where I know in my heart I'm not completely submitted to you. Lord, I repent because it hinders you from moving. It hinders you from showing up. It, you're looking for people who are submitted and yielded and compliant. And, Lord, I repent right now. So just go ahead and begin to repent. You don't have to cry out and scream and throw ashes on your body. <laughs> Just ask God to forgive you. Lord, forgive me for not submitting to your word, not submitting to your will, not submitting to your nature, not submitting to your plan. Forgive me, Father. And then even say, Lord, forgive me for trying to change people because that, that's usurping authority. And that's what the devil was. The devil was a usurper of authority. Lord, I repent for me trying to change people in my ability. Lord, I'm sorry for that because it does great damage and great harm. Lord, I, I repent for that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Woo. Now, I, I just sense in my heart the, the glory of God coming here right now.